Hey guys, and how's it going? We are going to continue on this ongoing engine fiasco of a pile that we got going on here. These are a bunch of freebie engines that were dropped off. They are Kohler 20 horsepower units, and we had three dead ones. We resuscitated one of them, put it in a tractor, resuscitated another one. It is right here, and we are in the process of working with the last two blown up ones that we have left over trying to make one more out of it. That one threw a rod and this one had no compression in the cylinders. The last video, we took the crankshaft out of this one, modified it to make it so it would have a coupler so we can tie two engines together. Well, we're gonna go continue on and try to build an engine. I'm not sure what parts we're gonna go use, but we're gonna go through them now, get some stuff cleaned up and try to get this one running and then eventually try to get the two of them running together. Well, further ado, we're gonna take and move pieces over to the other bench where we could see a little bit better and a little easier to work on. So give me a second and we'll get to it. All right, we gotta pick one of these engine blocks to move forward with. The one on the right is blown rod, one over there is a uh, poor bore in the cylinders. And just taking a quick look to see if there's, again, this is the cylinder that blew the rod and you know, hunks of metal and everything went flying. I don't know if I see any kind of damage Anywhere, probably pop the camshaft out and a crank to take a better look. You know, it's got some metal bits and stuff still floating in the bottom of it where it did its carnage. Uh, let's go take a peek at the original engine uh, with this original crank and let's go run a stone over these cylinders. I tried cleaning this one up earlier. You can see like how much crap is on the side of that but I've got new stones <laughs> there's a joke there and uh, let's go run that a little bit we'll clean them up we'll see how that looks if it doesn't um, be to our liking we'll jump over and work on cleaning this one up brand new stones Wow so I'm just gonna go look to see what kind of wear pattern this gives us we already did hit the other side the stone I was using was kind of beat now let's go for these Let's see what we got for a wear pattern. We'll wipe that down on a rag. And I know the other side looked kind of beat. And I think we might be going with the other block. Let's go grab a light and you we'll take a peek together. Yeah, that's pretty hammered. Could it be usable? Yeah, but I'm not. My only concern with the other block is possibly that it has a crack or something in it from uh, throwing a rod and you know punching against a case that I don't see. So let's go move over to that one. Let's go get the crank out of it, the camshaft out of it, and uh, we'll go clean that one up. Make sure we don't see any damage. And we'll move forward with that one. So I emptied this one out, and we haven't run a stone over the block. We're gonna go do that real quick. I just want to make sure I don't see any like cracks or anything on it. Let's go check out the other side. So what we'll do is we'll run a stone over it real quick and we'll see what kind of imperfections show up. And that's fine. We'll move forward. I'll start washing stuff. I'm not going to do every step of this. I want to try to get us to a, an operating engine and try to get them tied together is my goal. But uh, let's keep moving forward. Let's go run a stone over those, clean them up, kind of make a pile of parts that we're going to use. We're not going to use that crankshaft. And we are going to use the one that's over here. So we'll start gathering our, our goodies. So I gave it a decent bath. More concerned about the inside than the outside pieces. Cleaned up all the flanges going around where the uh, gaskets would be and ran the hone through it. I would not say it's perfect, but again, it is a used engine and it was running fairly decent. We do still have some uh, scratches running up and down. You really like the putting a crosshatch pattern is just for breaking rings in. We're putting old rings in it, so it's not even for any real purpose other than seeing what we got for a bore. You know, just see, see what kind of consistency we get across. You can see a little bit of. Uh, 
a line on the ridge there. But a compression test will tell us the condition of it. And then we're looking for damage. And the only thing I see is it took like a little bit of a hit on the case right there. But I don't see any cracks anywhere that are gonna cause us an issue. So I'm gonna continue on prepping and cleaning parts and getting them ready to rock and roll. I gotta rinse that out a little bit better to the oil passages up to the cam and all. I've been running cleaners through it because I don't want any little, like little bits of metal stuck in any of those. So I've been giving them a, a pretty thorough rinse through also. So in the process of uh, cleaning up the pistons and getting the rings out of them and the top ring was stuck. So that one cylinder had no compression. The top ring was about two thirds of it was stuck in place. You can see the side of the ring showing up the crap, the crap that is on it, like a rust. Yeah, you see it better there. All the stuff baked up on it. And in the piston, so here's the oil groove. You can kind of see in there a little bit better. Now you can see all the crap. The top one is where it was the worst. My guess is like a bunch of carbon got around it and it just kind of locked it up into place. So we will clean them up. The, the block is done. The side of the block is taken care of. What else we got done? Crankshaft, camshaft, flywheel, that kind of stuff. And yes, I'm going to use these same rings over again. I do have spare pistons, so if I, I find something that is an issue, we're going to go plop these in the jug real quick. What you do is you take the piston. I might as well just show you, right? Again, we're just throwing it back together with used parts, but essentially, you would take a ring and start it in the bore. And in different depths, you can take the piston and kind of square it up so it's even all around the board. There you go. And you look at the gap that's left behind. And the larger that gap is, the more your ring is worn and the more the bore is worn. So most of the wear happens the upper, I don't know, three quarters of an inch or so. And then as you go down the, the bore, not much, there's not much power being generated there. So it doesn't push on the walls as bad. So if you were to push it down, so you would take a feeler gauge in between. And then you take a feeler gauge again, you can see how much of that gap, I don't know if you guys can see the opening that I'm talking about, how much of that gap is opening. If that's changing, it's kind of giving you an idea how much or less the bore is uh, blown out on the top. A lot of times it gets egged out too. I don't know if I'm getting too, too much talk. <laughs> Sometimes the bore, because of the motion of the crankshaft and the connecting rod, it's kind of pushing pressure against one side of the piston and pulling back and forth. It'll make the jug oblong because most of the energy is going in that direction. Whereas not too much side. Oh my God, the jokes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna go keep cleaning stuff up. Well, I do think we're good enough to put the short block, you wanna call it, the bottom end of the engine together. Still have to do cylinder heads, but. So it's to lock the through a rod with the crankshaft of the water, <laughs> the water sogged engine, pistons from the water sogged engine. I took the rings from the blown up engine because when I put them in the bore, the gap was even, uh, tighter together so they're less worn out. So those are all set. The camshaft from the blown up engine, the same engine's going back in and the lifters are still in the correct location. The timing cover from the blown up engine, but with the oil pickup from the <laughs> water sogged engine because this was broken. So this may have been why this thing threw a rod. This was separated when we took it apart the screen setup, I went to go look at the other one and it does, it's not meant to come apart. So it, it did fall apart during its run. Whether that's what killed it, I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, get together and start putting all these little bits back inside this part of it. All right, let's get our put on put on. And we're going to start with the crank. This, this is just motor oil. Not gonna go to waste. So I think we can put crankshaft, pistons, then camshaft with um, lifters. I believe that's the case. I don't see there's any reason why we can't get the cam in there later, right? 
No. So it's time for pistions. And that's going to say, it's going to have an arrow towards the flywheel as soon as I find it. Yeah, let's go tap in some pistons, shall we? Square. I just need the ass end of a hammer. To run it home. There we go. The cap on it. Everything's oiled up. Liberal amounts of oil. As far as the torque wrench, I can't really get one in there. So I'm just going to do the old. <laughs> You'll see. Calibrator wrench out. That one feels good. And that one feels good. <laughs> Still spinning? Yep. Yeah. Right, let's go set up the second one. Sort of open the spring compressor back up. And let's go give her. Oil. We're just going to go crunch back down at it again and leave in about a eh, half inch or so of the um, piston showing. You just, you just really just got to cover the rings. And this is just drawing the rings in. And it's, it's one sided. The um, Tap them flat a little. One side's got like a little rib on the edges, and that rests against the top of the cylinder head. It doesn't try drawing down in with it. Let's go set our crank directly across from it. glance you really don't want to go slow you want to be fairly quickly when you are jumping that bridge you want a lally gag feels pretty good you get, you get that cap on in there oh. everything got nailed with oil so you don't see me put it on spin oh yeah nice we need the dot straight up maybe you can see it top of the uh, crank gear so you can get that camshaft in there let's go grab that this is 
still need to get ready for the party. I'm going to try dropping that down. And lining the two dots up. Slippery. on it. Try going one. Come on back up. <laughs> That's, That's not it. Is that right back where we were? <laughs> no, I think we're good. Two dots are right across from each other. All right, I think we can um, get ready to put this cover on. The lifters go in from the top and then everything else is kind of held in place by that. Thrust washer is on the can. Am I forgetting anything? Speak now. I'm gonna have some of you later on comment. Say, but. All right, so that is our governor. Where'd my oil thing go? It's my governor. Bearing sits there. I don't know. Have some oil. <laughs> so we'll pick up uh, on the cam there. We'll probably get a little bit, a little bit on the cam here, and a little on that. And we got to get some sealer. On one of these two halves. Jeez, whiz. I think it's a seal believe it or not. Oh, it's sticking out, right? The gears, we gotta turn the gears. How do you so you gotta turn the gears? Damn it. 
idea. I think I'm about to turn it somehow. Get those gears to mesh. I'll grab a pair of ice grips on that end. Nothing attaches to that nub. That's something I welded on. Use that for. I'm gonna go find some bolts and buzz that together. And hopefully, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's still spinning. Let's see how our pistion ones look. Mm -hmm. I think we can go do our lifters now. They're just the same ones going right back in their same location. Unless you find one that's trashed. Yeah. Does not look like they were. Generally, lifters when they're in there, they kind of rotate as they hammer. That one looked like it wasn't doing much of, much of it. Neither that one, too. It's just a straight line going across. I don't like worry about it. Yeah. So we got to get ourselves a couple of cylinder heads that are worth having. So I'm going to go take a peek at what we got in our stash. Try to pick the two best ones out. Maybe take them apart, clean up the carbon, lap them in a little bit, and slap them on. So these are our choice. The inner ones were the one, I'm going to say that, this is the, one, the ones that were off this engine that threw a rod. And they also look like they ran kind of hot. My only concern is the um, exhaust valve seat if it's got a bunch of play in it and these are the ones we're going to call it the waterlogged engine flip them over so, these are the two that were running on that engine to begin with these outer cruddy ones uh i think probably what we should probably just do is we'll stick with the ones actually let's look at the studs for the exhaust <laughs> That one just got one pulled out of it. It's got a broken one. We'll swap it. In. That one's good. Pulled out. That gave us nothing. I'm going to go pop the valves out of one of these and I'll see how the guides are. If the guides are still tight, we'll just clean these up and use these over again. Maybe. I got the springs off of them. It actually feels like so the travel is only about that much. So that's all the way open and kind of rocking it back and forth. I'm checking to see how the guide, how much plays in the guide. That's the intake. The exhaust is the one that really gets it. That's where all the heat is. It actually feels really good. You know, being dirty, it's like it's got a good contact patch all the way around. Yeah. I'm just going to clean them up. And the cylinder head. Might as well, right? Yeah, the exhaust valve, not that I cleaned it off, got some pitting to it. So, way too much. Oh, because I got so much out. Might as well put some on the intake also, right? Waste not. Let's get rid of that. Go to slow.
looks pretty good. The contact patch is much better now. The seat looks pretty good. Don't worry about that. I'm going to do the same with the other one. Put it all back together. And the cylinder head's cleaned up. I end up lapping all the valves. They seem like they're pretty decent shape though. The heat had me kind of concerned a little bit. Some fresh head gaskets, right? I know. Spending the big money now. I think it was 13 bucks. <laughs> I get them uh, torqued down. We got to get the push rods put in, rockers, all that. Almost close to a compression test. Well, I think it's got me a little uh, perplexed, which we're going to see. Hopefully, it doesn't be, make an issue. All right. I'm going to go to top dead center on that one. See how you can see where the ridge is, and there's a little bit of a gap below that angle. There's a little bit of space there. And do the other piston. It's not there. So, hmm. <laughs> do I have a crank rod in the wrong way? I don't know. We'll find out. Get some rockers. So I can buzz you in. It's off the cam. And do the same thing to the other side. Oh, looks like everything's put together. And pressure on that side. We keep going, get the uh, starter back on it, see if we can spin it up with that. It's not any oil in it or no plugs, but we oiled everything putting it together. Let's just give her a spin. Starter's on it. <laughs> Is 
If he gets the starter, we have the jumper pack. Engine turns fine. I think somebody forgot to plug in the jumper pack. Eh, try that again. All right, contact. Let's shove a uh, compression tester in it, see what we get. And cylinder number one. All right, what do you think we're gonna get first? <laughs> I say 125. Again, it is dry. There's no real um, oil on the walls. Just kind of quickly what we splashed it down with, but. A oh, buck 50, I'll go with that. It's only gonna improve when it gets wet. <laughs> uh, back it off. Right, let's go try the other side. See what that gives us. Hopefully it's 150, 150 because the other two cylinders on the other engine were exactly that too. Oh, the anticipation. Get like zero. <laughs> and try this again, make no wires in the way. Get chomp up anything. One. 50, I'd say it's 151. <laughs> awesome. I'm happy for that. All right, I'm going to continue to dress this a little bit more, get all the tins and stuff cleaned up on it, and uh, try to get it to where we could run it. And I have no idea what we have for a carburetor, and of course, we have no exhaust. We have no exhaust for either one of them, so it'd be nice and loud anyway. I'll take it apart. Oh, no, I didn't. Let's go check for a spark, the coils, make sure they're functioning. Yeah, let's check for spark. Somebody was commenting on one of the other videos when I didn't have spark that I had to put the plug up against something, but there was paint on it. That's not gonna make any difference. Uh, it, you could make an air gap in between and it's gonna go try jumping across that. I don't um, recommend that you hold on to the plug when you do that. Um, but if you have it grounded out. Uh, that one's good. It sucked to put all the tins together and you find out the coil's bad. And that one's good. Yeah, it'll arc right through the paint. It doesn't have to be grounded to it. It does cause a little bit of resistance, but the, you know, the, it's able to jump, jump across that. It's able to jump across a, a tinier dimension on the outside of the plug. Well, I'm winding down, getting the last couple pieces on. Took the carb, clean that. Everything's looking really good. Getting the valve covers all set. To figure out which ones are going to go wash and put on there. I'm like, yeah, all right. One slight problem. You see it? The valve cover does not have a hole in it to put the oil in. And this block just had the tiny dipstick. The other ones have the larger one inch where you put a funnel in and that's where you would fill it. On this engine, you would use the valve cover and have a plug on it, just open it up and pour it in. The other two valve covers that are with this are ones with fuel pumps on them. And they do not have an orifice to put oil in because of that. <laughs> so the other engine that's on the tractor has the large dipstick on it and the cover. So I just have to, I have to swap one of these covers out with that engine. But for now, before I put the second valve cover on, I'm going to have to fill it up with oil like that. Well, you could just disregard all that because I went upstairs and I found one. How's that? Now that engine upstairs, <laughs> different story. It's going to have the same issue. All right, well, I got oil in it. Jumper pack hooked up. I took the oil pressure switch out of it. I wanted to first see what we get for the oil pump working. And also if there's any contaminants in the system, I'd rather let it go purge itself out that I didn't get. Uh, let's go spin her around a little bit and see what happens. That's what we get. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Gotta fill up the oil filter too. There we go. Looks pretty good. Looking down at the pan that we got coming out. Looks pretty much decent flow to it too. Awesome. I'm gonna throw that oil pressure switch back in. Unfortunately, it's too late to fire it up tonight, especially with no exhaust on it. So for you, it's only gonna be a second, but for me, it's gonna be the next day. 
we gotta try to play friends with the neighbors, you know? Alright. Well, I got her getting filled up with fuel. And the float stuck. So I guess you got her already primed. <laughs> Let's get she popped in a stand and fire it up, see how she does. It's just on idle right now. Hopefully it stays that way. And I don't think we need choke because like I said we just dumped gas down it. And it kind of primed itself. Fire in a hole. Come on. Go give her a little bit of choke. Oh, you know what? I forgot what to do. I gotta put power to that, um, same problem last time. I gotta go put power to the uh, solenoid on the carburetor. It's not gonna let any fuel in it. That's just what overflowed. Yeah, we just need a little jumper wire. Go to the car. I'm giving that 12 volts and that should click when we put it to power. Yeah, it does. All right. Now we should be able to turn the choke off. Let's see if it should go. I have to change that starter too. <laughs> It's in it. Awesome. There we go. We got two for two. I think pissing out of it anywhere. That's a good sign. Now we just got to go put two engines together. <laughs> All right, let's go regroup, clean some crap off the bench, get them both over here, and we'll kind of get into how we want to go about doing that. I'm going to go fill it up one more time and try it.
So I took a few minutes, cleaned up the bench, and brought another engine over. So this is the one we just got done doing. This is the one that we did about a week and a half ago out of the uh, junk parts. Both of them have 150 PSI compression in all four cylinders, we should say. And trying to figure out where the top dead center would be. And I decided it doesn't really matter. I don't have to find top dead center. I just got to make sure when I couple them together that they are 180 degrees out from each other. So I went and I took the... Uh, coupler back off again I found where the key was on this one marked it up top and yeah, pretty much just did the same on that one over there so I'm gonna work on trying to figure out what our best way is to get these lined up get keys cut in them and get the coupler so that can come come apart and go together you know the, the coupler has a key in it but I don't have anything in this shaft and we've got to spin one of the engines around to go show the other one so I'm gonna go pick away at that and also uh, I kind of want a 180 out from each other just so that we, possibly we can get by with one starter and if you know we don't have two cylinders trying to make compression at the same time it should be able to do it but again we'll see. As far as charging system I'm not concerned about that we only need one of the two working we don't need both and anything else? Uh, anything else you can kind of figure out as we go along. Oh if, we, if it is an issue we find where it doesn't run right it's got weird har harmonics it's got a four bolt flange so all we would have to do is unbolt it, spin it around, and bolt it back on the other way, and that would give it give us uh, both pistons firing at the same time on both engines. All right, let's go try to figure out how to make that go on there and get locked on. Yeah, some days I really wish I brought the bridge port over to the shop here, but I do not. So we need to make a slice in there for that key to fit right there. <laughs> I'm thinking Dremel. So actually, I think I may start with the, uh, a larger grinder wheel and we'll touch it up with a smaller one if we need to. <laughs> so this works out. Worst case, you weld it up, right, and start over. That'll be pretty good. I'm going to keep whittling away on that, get it deeper in the cavity, but that's what we're going for. I don't know if the light's getting here or not. It seems like sometimes it gives a weird reflection, but we're close. I'll probably even just tap that into place. I'm just going to go fine tune it a little bit with a file, kind of clean up the edges and the, the groove in the center. And I think we're pretty close. We just got to do it one more time, right? On the, the one that's fixed on the engine. This one's nice because we get to kind of work in a vise. Yeah, I think we're pretty close. If we tap on that, it'll go. So, getting there. Thought I was going to make a mess of it, didn't you? So did I. Let's go give that a little, a little lube in case we need to go take it apart, which I'm sure we will. So key fitting in a pretty decent. And I'm gonna pull the love taps. I don't want to run. Let's uh, run that key back a little. Run it in because it's probably gonna walk with the key. got that one. Uh, I think it's actually just the pulley's a little too tight on this shaft right here. I'm going to have to go clean that up just a little bit, but 
rather tight than sloppy, right? Yeah, because even with no key, goes on about that far and locks up. So let me do a little polishing of my shaft. Let's see how we're doing for fit now. Oh yeah, there you go. How about with the key? The key we can grind down if it's too tall. Let's see what we get. Come on. For a couple of love taps. snug enough where it doesn't have any slop in it plus we, do, we still have two set screws that we crank down on it uh, but it's not too much where we can't tap it back off with a hammer again so awesome Let's move on to the other one snug and the second one I don't want to go too far. I want to make sure the screw can still uh, push on that key. So I'm going to leave that one right about there. We could drive it in further if we have to. I think that's got both of them. Well, it's the two of them mocked up with the couplers bolted solid and the set screws cranked down on them. Now we just got to get, figure out how to make a frame to go across on each of them. I'm thinking maybe we'll just kind of come off the case of the one side. You can see I, when I put the oil plug back in on this one, I took the extension off of it. Maybe I'll go flip this one up, do the same thing. We'll get it out of our way. We'll clean the blocks up and maybe we'll get like a piece of angle iron. We'll try to run it true on the two of them and mark some holes. And I, I guess maybe we get an angle on both sides of them. We can um, build off of that, you know. It's not strong enough to hold it, but at least it would kind of hold everything square to each other. All right, let me get this engine flipped up. Get that drain plug out of there and grab a piece of angle. Let's go angle iron shopping. See if we can dig up. Not quite sure. I don't know how much height we had to work with. A big ass piece you could probably go with. That'd be nice to stiff for it, not wiggling around. But I think the problem is we're going to run into the inside of the angle. It has a taper to it. It's not that piece right there. Go put that one in the take it to the bench pile. And we can get one that's you know, like a bed frame size. There should be some over here somewhere. Hmm. I'll find it. I'll find it. I got more over here. What about? Oh. That looks pretty stout. We got two pieces of it. Are they the same? We'll go grab one of those for now. See which ones kind of fit on the engine block. I so we like these. So that one's gonna hit. We're gonna hit the bottom of the the block right here. I think the other one's even taller, but at least it has some reach underneath. Yeah. I bought, make sure it's straight also. And the thing is, we also need two pieces. 
really uh, fun. That, this one looks like it's got a bit of a bow to it, and that's not going to work. Not sure of that yet, though. That be an optical illusion. So I'm going to go hunt for two pieces that can make that spin. We could probably just notch it right around where it goes around the case there. So I was screwing around. That big piece of angle did have a bend to it, so it was no good. Went back in the stash. I found four of these plates. Not quite sure what they're off of, but what I'm thinking is maybe I'll drill them and make them the same for the four locations. It won't, you know, if it's off slightly here, won't you make too much of a difference? We'll lay it down, square the engines up, and then we'll come up with another piece of metal and we'll weld it to them. Like once the blocks are squared away and are bolted down, we can weld it to it and support it and beef up the frame, so to speak. It will just make these the tabs that are getting bolted to. So I'm gonna do my best to go whittle out four of hopefully the same pieces and we'll get them bolted to the block, clean some of the paint off and uh, you can come up with. Well, I made my mock-up plate. Yeah, it looks like we gotta find the hole. Yeah, it's got a little bit of movement. So I just gotta make three more of those. I think we'll be good. This is something called a, a transfer punch. It comes in a set, looks like a drill, back, drill bit index. And it's just got a little nipple on the center of it. And you pick the right size to fit just the hole that you made. And if you line the pieces up and you give them a whack, it's going to put a little dimple right dead center of that hole. And while you're at it, you can go do number two. Transfer punch. Hopefully if I drill that, it'll be exactly the same as that. Well, don't they look just cute? Right, let's go lay it down and try to get something to square off on those. All right, so I'm here sitting here pondering, trying to figure out what the best solution to come up with. A cradle, we call it a cradle. I got some one by two square tubing. I was thinking about putting these lips up on this surface and, and welding it, and then we can go box around. Or the other part I was thinking is if maybe we take angle iron and we set it on the angle iron and give a weld around it and then make a box. And we could always kind of build after on that. Kind of like both of them. I'm not sure which way is the best way to go. Uh, hmm. Probably about the same thickness. Both these are about the same thickness. This is going to be a little less likely to twist over it, but like I said, I, I think we're still going to add on. Just try to think about what's the best going to give us probably the best attachment. Take your bets. Because <laughs> I still don't know until we bring the camera back on. I'm starting to think maybe we'll go with this. We'll just cut up some new pieces. Yeah, so here's where you are. I got uh, one by two tubing attached to the bench and the motors lined up to that, squared off to that. I'm kind of concerned, you know, again, I'm using the bench as a flat work surface to make sure everything kind of lines up. But I'm wondering if, like, so the coupler floats in the middle, so that, don't worry about the gap that's here. We're more concerned about the outside of it. This can, the center can push around and move around a little. I wonder if we can get like some kind of big hose clamp or something and wrap the center of it to try to help maybe square it. Well, you think that's not even gonna really make any difference. You can't really clamp it because it's, it's rubber cushion. So if you squeeze too much on one side than the other, you're, you're gonna knock it out of whack too. I think we just throw a couple tacks on that and we'll get another one on the other side, spin it around, do the same. And just maybe we'll take the plugs out and we'll spin it with that, we'll just see how things go. I think we got it braced up enough and kind of spin it. Let's get the plugs out of this one and we'll hook a jumper pack to it and we'll spin it, see how it looks. And then we'll put plugs in it, see how it looks. And then we'll put plugs in it with gas in it. We'll see how that looks. Everything just blows apart. <laughs> all right, so here we go. One starter, no plugs. Oh, come on. Let's go try the other starter. <laughs> oh, that one. Come on. 
on, man. Would help if I hook the power lead back up. Come on, baby. Looks pretty good. I haven't seen, seen anything jumping out that. Come on. Let's go throw some plugs in there for resistance and we'll see if it's able to kick them over. And this time we got plugs in, no wires connected. I don't want to try to start it yet. I just want to see what, like how they fight. And if that starter can move it over the hill. Why does something sound awful? <laughs> Alright. You think it's just the starter fighting everything? Don't know. Let's um, put the plug wires and tighten the plugs up, put the plug wires in, dump a little bit of fuel in each one, and we got to put power to each carb. Let's go fire it up, see if it'll idle and what it does. I think the clunking that we're hearing is the play between the two of them. Hopefully, when they run, it doesn't do that. And it'll kind of either favor tight or, you know, clockwise or counterclockwise locked together. Well, this doesn't look like an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> Alright, we got power to both carburetors for the fuel. Let's go see what we get. Come on. We got no choke neither. What if we get that off of there? <laughs> Woo Means you can find a jumper wire. It wants to jump. Yeah, I gotta get better wire. So close. Oh, the anticipation. Back on there and get one more. Yeah, we even have matching yellow leads. And they have the little rubber boot over the end. Try to keep it out of harm's way. We got power. Can we work both those chokes, maybe? Which one's the choke? That one. That one. We'll give it like. A little bit of breathing room on each one. All right, try it again. Ha, ha, ha. 
Somebody's got to die. And I see the gap is opening up where the rubber is just totally getting chewed away to nothing. I'm not sure which one it is. We think we'd see a bunch of spitting rubber out though, huh? They think like they move further apart, don't they? Yeah, one of them may have loosened up. Hmm. Kind of works. I'm hoping that rubber is not getting chewed. I don't know if it's meant to run 40 horsepower through that or not. <laughs> Let's go um, get a little pry bar on each pulley. See if one of the pulleys is just kind of loose and, and worked its way back would be my guess. Let's go try this one first. If you can get under it. No. Nope. Let's um, see if we can get a, crow, a uh, crow's foot in on the other one. Uh, they're both fixed in place. I think. Well, the rubber had plenty. Of that. I don't think the gap was that wide before, though, do you? One of them had to move. I don't think the engine moved. <laughs> they don't have no place to go, right? They're all kind of locked in. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there's that. Not that we can't close it up and fix it up again, but uh, uh, I wonder. I'm going to try looking for like a Lovejoy coupler that is a 7 8 bore that we have that set up and keyed and all that kind of stuff and <laughs> everything's built. We'll possibly look for this one again. Yeah, I wonder if that rubber is just getting chewed up. But you would think there would be a like a, a line of rubber on the table if that was the case. I can go screw around a little bit. I'm going to do a little bit of prying. Try to figure if I could figure it out or watch the video back and see which one of them moved. We should be able to see like how much gap we had on one side and how much gap was from the bolts and see if one of them just kind of walked a little bit. Yeah, so I did an instant replay because I can. And this is the one that walked because these bolts were proud of it before and now they're not. It was also kind of the harder one it was to uh, tighten up because it was hard to get into with the allen wrench i just did an allen wrench with the l coming up and you know put a pair of pliers on it so let me go loosen that one back up again slide it back out and uh make sure we're okay yes it's getting better to look at it turn it where i could see it uh, the top one was loose uh, that one is missing <laughs> so where did it go well there you are so let me make sure that i can get those a little tighter that might help hold it in place at least it didn't burn itself up that I was concerned about. Still might, but... Yeah, I moved a bunch of junk out of the way. I bolted that ring that was kind of stopping it and get a regular socket on it. Still kind of a little... Can we turn it? Get it off that tab. There we go. Yeah, even the other, the other one was like four threads out too. As I was tightening it, it kind of hit like gumminess. And I think when I was trying to use an Allen wrench, I hit that and I thought I was home. But I wasn't. That will work a lot better. Nice. Give me my socket back. I'll put the bolts back in that. We'll throw that back together because that holds that plastic fan on the inside there. So that will throw the bolts back in that. That hooked up. Well, I think if the only casualty is a coupler that loosened up because I couldn't get in there to tighten it decent. I think that went for a very good success. My goal was to try to make it so that I can get two engines to run together and uh, I did. So <laughs> got plenty more to do and, then, and that was just with like a tack together frame. I'm going to box it on the ends kind of make it its own cradle to support everything with and I think it'll be much more rigid. Plus we can probably go like with a triangulation like once we box this in with 
uh, square tubing going across and then across here we could put some uh, flat stock angle stiffen it up and whatever also it gets attached to will also help um, keep everything rigid so when i was working the throttles when it was running I could tell. I revved both of them together. I wanted to see how it responded. Then I revved one more than the other, and then I revved the other one more than it. And um, I wanted to see like one pushing another engine, one pulling another engine, if it made any kind of difference. And it seemed good. It, it didn't seem like it was shaking a, a bunch. Again, I got to kind of watch the, the video. Plus, it's so loud with the exhaust. You know, it's kind of a little hard to tell. We only need one starter. We only need one charging system. I don't know if I want to go into... Um, it all depends what it gets used for. I know it's going to be used for or how it's going to perform when it's being used and we may be able to get rid of the fans and the covers and all that and just leave the heads open and let them kind of air cool if uh you know it's moving it has airflow across it so we'll see on that but yeah I'm happy so far I'm happy with the um the amount of non fighting itself or shaking it seemed pretty good I think the clunking when I was trying to crank it with the starter was just like one engine advancing and then the other one advancing and just a little bit of play in there that's my guess and we have a another input shaft that can come out of here sitting on the bench over there somewhere let me get it so as far as power coming out of the engine we could bolt that to the front of it and then we could take power coming out of there and i'm not sure if this is going to be the back of the setup or the front of the setup it all depends whether i use uh, what I use for a transmission sometimes if you use two gears the gears reverse themselves so you can spin it around and Sometimes you're using a belt, you know, it stays consistent So we can either run it like this a shaft going down back out to the rear or if we spin it around This will be the back of it and we just have power going straight down undecided yet, but that's okay I'm happy with uh, how we made out so far You want to see else what else we got? Pick this up over the weekend for the same project it is a rear end out of a uh, Harley Davidson golf cart, like an old, like a 70s three wheel golf cart. And you say, well, why do you want to use that? Because that has a gearbox in it. So this is the input. It would have had a CVT transmission. Of course, that pulley's gone. But it has a gearbox here that has new, uh, neutral, forward, and reverse. And it has a rear brake. So this lever here runs a brake that breaks the axles uh, also from turning. So that's the setup of it. And. Uh, Hopefully that'll be used. It's a little cruddy. It's a little hard to kind of turn. So I have a feeling it's been sitting, judging by the looks of it, it's been sitting in the weather for a day or 40 years. <laughs> that That's its own problem when we get to it. But for now, guys, I want to thank you for hanging out, doing some wrenching, and getting two engines together to make me a little V4 power plant with about 40 horsepower. All right, guys, with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you all for hanging out, doing some wrenching, being goofy, being silly. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.